All right, I got my HP tuner's device here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Grab my laptop here. <laughs> yeah. I'm a real deal tuner now. I'm gonna make all the power. Here comes a thousand horsepower. They said this is complicated with the HP tuners. This ain't so bad. This ain't so complicated. Oh my goodness. I totally understand all of this stuff right here. Airflow means power. Uh, um, okay. Uh, what the hell does this mean? What the hell does that mean? What the hell is any of this? I just want to make more boost and power. What is this? You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. <laughs> At least that's how it feels after cutting my teeth with this HP tuner software and learning that there happens to be more than one way you can tune a car in the sense that different cars implement different tuning strategies to control the power. This is not what I thought it was. Though you all warned me, like a lot of this I understand, and then a lot of it I don't. And what I don't understand, well, what I am learning to understand, I should say, is how all of this works with the Ford cars. So when I started learning tuning, like just the bare basics of tuning, when I got the micro squirt and I was tuning that for the uh, convertible Fox body, that was all simple to me. You know, you set it up, you set your, your, you know, spark tables, your fuel tables, enrichment, you know, all these different things. It, it's pretty simple. You know, you put your foot down, it does whatever you program it to do. That's it. You can put other stuff in there, but it was pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. This, mm -mm, nope. This is a whole different world. This torque based tuning is wow okay it's yeah it's complicated it's a confusing especially at first because none of like the normal tuning logic applies you have all of these different just parameters and all these different limiters and all of this is like connected there's so many different things that are interconnected with each other. And if you change this table, this will affect something somewhere else. It's a pain. You need to know what to change, how much to change to get the desired result or effect you want. And if you don't know, then yeah, bad things can happen or you just don't get the results you want. I've been playing around with this for a few days now, doing lots of reading and uh, I've uh, flashed a car already and my first attempts were unsuccessful. The settings that I thought I had right were completely wrong and I made the car so undrivable that I had to turn around and come back home to reflash the stock file just so I could go out for the day. I'm like, uh-uh. Nope, I ain't ready yet. <laughs> so I ended up doing a little bit more, you know, reading on the HP Tuners forums and just looking around and stuff and just watching some YouTube videos, trying to get a, a basic understanding of what I need to do. The first thing, I needed to do, which I didn't do, was I needed to take a data log with the VCM scanner and I needed to see what the car was doing. So that's what I did. So I went out and, and I've made this config file based off a video I found on YouTube. It's mostly how I want it. I think I could add a couple things or whatever, but I think it's mostly there. I still have to work on the layout of this. Like there's so many different things you gotta do to set this up for you in your car. It's not just plug in this, that, and the other. It's a, it's a lot of time and work it takes to kind of dial everything in. Uh, that I'm learning. I learned very quickly, but yeah, I went and took a data log. I did just a, a pull from like, I don't know, 30, 40 mile per hour. Yeah, 30. You know, the normal pulls I do where I just put it in third gear and just stab the throttle and let it do its thing and let it shift through a couple gears, but I let it go up 
to fifth gear because I wanted to see if it would do that like uh, throttle shuffling thing that it's been doing and, and it did a little bit because you can see right here this green line that's your throttle it opens up as soon as boost ramps in and then it immediately shuts but then once it did that I noticed over here it says a couple things that I'm not used to seeing when it comes to data logging, which is great because this is supplying me information that I never had before. And uh, it, it was cool to see all these different parameters. But uh, since learning some of this, I've created a new base file to start kind of tweaking things with to see if this works. Since I do tend to run ethanol a lot, um, I probably won't run as much as in there, which is way higher than I normally run. I just kind of like quickly splash them E85 and 93 in. I was just trying to get home and I overmixed. Realistically, you know, the E30, E40, I might be around depending on boost level. I'll have to see. But I've learned that there's a couple cool things you can do to help with ethanol. There's a whole flex fuel tuning tab in this thing. So I've enabled that flex fuel enable and uh, this I'm hoping if this works correctly this will learn ethanol percentage in the in the tank it's, it infers the ethanol percentage based off the air fuel ratio I don't know if this is all dialed in to work the way it needs to go but it's a starting point I guess I have yet to flash this I'm about to do that I was just going back over everything making sure I have most of what I want in here, I've, I've messed with a couple of other small parameters. It's complicated. Like the first thing you need to do is just like try to figure out every limiter you're hitting and turn that shit off. Turn it all off. Well, don't turn it off, but you know, you want to make sure that you're not hitting that limiter. So yeah, I think I can go ahead and flash this file and see how the car reacts. I want to see how that ethanol, how it actually learns ethanol percentage. And I assume it scales things based off that, I think. I know there's settings I can adjust, but I'm not sure if you just, by switching that on, if it actually automatically scales stuff. I'm sure it does to some extent. And I know it can, um, there are parameters that can be scaled. I can put in myself that are not populated by the car because the car doesn't have flex fuel capability from Ford. And I'm sure people who use this watching know exactly what I'm doing wrong and what I'm doing right. Please chime in because I need, uh, I'm gonna need a little help getting off the ground here and learning the uh, ins and outs of this torque based system. But what I like about this is I already got this pretty much done and ready to rock. So I'm just gonna save this again, just to be sure. I love how simple this is to flash tune. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Turn my car on. Literally is, it, you know, you come up here, this little right uh, vehicle, right calibration, does its thing. And it starts uh, starts the process, which is nice because it's super fast. Like it, it's less than a minute it takes to flash a new file, which is so nice. I am not used to having something so fast. You can change stuff on the fly. Like, you know, if you're out driving, you do your little log, things aren't right, you go and take a little, you know, make a couple changes, and then you're back on the road within minutes, you know, taking another log. So it's nice where it's all set up here, and you know, you can use the VCM scanner back to back, make your pool, log, check your VCM scanner, uh, see what needs to change, hop over into VCM editor, change the parameters you want, flash in like less than a minute, go back out, do it. You know, it's it's nice. It's a really nice workflow that I'm not used to using because I've never had the ability to do it all in like one device like this. And just like that, look, it's done done flashing. So I gotta turn the ignition off. One Mississippi two, Mississippi three, Mississippi and ignition back on. And done. Buster's now flashed with a flex fuel tune. And uh, really, the only thing I've changed in this tune was uh, the flex fuel logic enabling it. And I have made some changes to the fueling, to the fuel pump and whatnot to help keep fuel pressure better. 
Just small, I mean, I'm talking about very small changes until I know exactly what everything is doing, at least to some extent, so. But we'll go ahead and give uh, Buster a start here with the flex fuel tune. This is the first time I'm actually uh, logging a modified file, so this is pretty exciting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda let the car do its thing and I'm gonna see how it runs and I'm gonna take a log and we'll take a look at that log and you know, <laughs> we'll go from there. Hopefully nothing nothing bad happens. I just went out for eh, not that long of a drive, but long enough to realize that things need to be changed before I go for a longer drive. Did some pulls and the car is, you know, it ran fine. It r runs like it normally did. It wasn't doing anything bad, but I did get it to throw the overboost code. Um, and I have, and by the way, the uh, boost max is bypassed. So that's not doing anything at all. I actually love this. This for me is a game changer. I just wish it displayed it in units that I better understand. So example, this gives me freeze frame data when this code popped up, what everything was at when this happened, what triggered this. So this is good to know exactly at what point was this set. And you can see like uh, where it was set at 5700 RPM. So yeah, it, that's really useful um, when trying to figure things out, like knowing exactly where things happened. Now, another cool thing I figured out with this is there's, you can set this up to like even read horsepower and torque. Like this is not super accurate method, but I bet you it's ballpark. It feels about what it's telling me. So I believe that it's pretty close. The butt meter, the butt meter mainly agrees and it's not far off from what Ford has programmed this car to do which is interesting because it feels stronger in some instances than it did now. This whole new setup, because it's not dialed in, does not feel nearly as mm, potent as the last engine did when everything was running really good. We're not talking huge differences. We're talking about less than 100 horsepower difference. But according to the car at max boost during that little last pull I did, it made, where did it make? 313 horsepower. And 313. 315, 273 torque. So that's not far off considering the car's holding itself back. I mean, it's 332 from Ford and that's at the crank. So that makes sense. Obviously that's not a number that can really be super relied on, but it's good data because I know the car should be making more than that. But it feels like that's what it feels like. It feels like about 300 pound feet, 300 horsepower, which is still plenty of power. It's still nice power, but it is a far cry from, you know, what I want. I got a lot to learn and this is kind of just like tip of the iceberg, you know, on this rabbit hole that I'm finally going down with this car. It's gonna be a lot of learning, a lot of time put in to this. Ugh, ooh. <laughs> Hopefully I can get it dialed in to at least make 400 horsepower or so. Like I am just so fearful of knock now, like that audible detonation. It kind of takes the fun away. <laughs> like when you just can't even focus on enjoying the car and you're just listening for knock so i gotta be careful as i learn and as i adjust and um now that i have tuning the next thing before big big power out of relatively speaking out of my setup even happens i'm investing in a auxiliary fuel system of sorts the cheapest i can find and i'm probably going to go with a highly sophisticated water meth or water eth and all injection for aux fueling and cylinder cooling because that will make me feel better about um, suppressing detonation and i'd rather not have to blend e85 all the time or i can just put a couple gallons in and know i'm good without having to really get in super deep with calculations and all i need 9.365 gallons of e85 gotta make sure it's testing you know i don't i don't want to go through all that i don't want to invest the money in the ethanol sensors not yet so that's kind of where i'm going with that it's at that point that i'm going to be able to push the turbo and really 
extract the max power I'm looking to get. That's way, that's down the road. But that is definitely in the next big mod to this car. And once again, it really all just comes down to just protecting the engine. I am so fearful of that detonation, man. That has scarred me for life. But yeah, this is it. Finally getting started with tuning. This video is probably lasted way longer than I wanted to, but you know, just kind of going through everything and uh, yeah, just let me know what you think and whatnot. If you have any suggestions on some parameters I should look at or keep an eye on, please, by all means, put them in the comments. I need to, need to learn this and learn this as fast as possible so I can, uh, you know, have some fun and be safe about it. But other than that, I think that's what I'm finally wrap it up here for this video. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next Cars Creative video.